a very good afternoon to all of you we'll be having a session now of your particular course mmpf 003 that is management control system in the earlier three sessions of this particular course we had covered already your block one of management control structure management control system in that we try to focus on what is management control system what are its characteristics what is its need why we shall go forward in having a management control system in the organization and what are the benefits of the management control system now in this particular block 2 which will be comprising of unit 4 to 5, 6, 7, 8 that means 5 units will be there we will be trying to look at how the structure of this management control should be looking like so today we shall pick up first responsibility centers in this first session of block 2 responsibility centers now when we are talking of responsibility center let us understand uh, what we mean by responsibility in general terms we can say that yes when we are assigned with some kind of task with a desired output which is logical which is realistic and since we are delegated the thing which are responsible to complete it in time in an organization so when i say we we mean the individual responsible now center we can say responsibility center or simply center in an organization the whole organization can be taken as a single center now it can be broken down into small small components there can be centers or segments where only the production work will be going on that means will be incurring only the cost there can be particular segments which will be looking after the cells in other words they will be trying to generate revenues similarly we may have also various segments or centers in the organization <coughs> which Apart from looking into the production, they will also be looking at the same time the sales of those items. So here we will be talking of the expenditure or the cost as well as the revenues out of the output. So when we have both cost and revenue at the same time, we can have the profits if it is negative profit we can say that it is losses apart from that the small small segments which for which the organization exists that means day-to-day -day operations organization also look for its future that means it can be expansion it can be modernization etc which may maximize its achievements in terms of return on the amount that it has spent in the organization so here we can call it as an investment 
will be looking at all the things in this particular uh, you can say block will be starting up with the first one that is responsibility center now what is a responsibility centers in large organization with several segments responsibility accounting and responsibility centers are fundamental to management control system our objective is to establish the management control system in the organization now the large organizations can be comprising of various segments or units which will be differing in their activities so according to the various activities the units can be assigned different responsibilities now these are called as responsibility centers what is the basic necessity here the delegation of authority and assignment of responsibility take a small segment suppose production the production department there the production manager or the operation manager he is in charge of producing the outputs and what is his or her responsibility there as the manager to see that the maximum utilization of resources or the minimization of wastage so there means we can have a control of costs if we can control cost in other words we will be adding benefits to the organizations the bottom line that we can say how much it has generated from its operations so here necessity is authority should be delegated large organization it is very difficult to manage as we shall see later on in this particular session units will be differing from each other so we have to delegate the authority to the management structure or the pyramid as we move downwards so delegation of authority also will be along with responsibility the manager should be responsible for his or her actions the relationship between responsibility centers and organization structure now here we can say that the responsibility centers should be designated in such a way that it fits as a component or unit into the organization structure with responsible managers as well as staffs attached to the respective units now there can be various types of responsibility centers as i said responsibility centers they can focus on the cost only as in production department the revenue generation part which happens in the sales department the profit centers which happens at the divisional level or the unit level that means a particular product line how much profit it is generating similarly in order to have future expansions modernization etc we have to 
put capital into that so that the benefits will accrue to the organization in the future called as investment centers so here we also talk about a particular item called as management by exception in other words mbe when we say management by exception we try to see the particular organization as operating solo no two organizations are same you may say that our organization is producing similar products to another organization so we will be having the same kind of management control or the responsibility centers no there can be some kind of differences in the whole structure leading to different responsibility centers so we can manage the organization here not by adopting some other company or firms way of controlling but we develop it ourselves now what are the various strategy structure and management control now let us look at the strategy formulation first when we talk of strategy we talk of what is the way the organization is adapting or moving forward to achieve its long term goals that means it is the direction in which the organization is moving now to find out that direction or the way in which the organization should move for achieving the objectives or the goals in the long run this is the general idea as proposed by anthony and gobindrajit so two kind of inputs we take at the base level that is environment or environmental inputs and internal inputs when we talk of environmental we talk of those factors which are external to the organization then what way they will be affecting the organization some of the external forces or the environmental things that has been listed here are competition competition competitor regulations and social competition when we talk of competition we talk about the market conditions here what is our market say what are the market say of our other competitors that means the organization who are working or producing in the same line what are the rules and regulations that we have to adhere to in order to run the organization rules and regulation can come from either the central government the state government or the local government apart from that we can have rules and regulations regarding the environmental impact we can have regarding the taxation part so we have to adapt to that another thing that we look into or focus is the social aspect in considering social aspect we talk of the society at large 
how do they visualize the organization what do they expect from the organization what the company or the organization will be able to do for the society that is csr the corporate social responsibility when we go into internal things we talk of what kind of technology we are adopting for our production line is it the latest technology is that technology suitable to our production level, level? you know that according to production level technology varies from one to another so whether our technology is in accordance with our level of production then we look at our manufacturing facility is it the latest one is it the best one is it wasting less amount of resources then we look at the marketing aspect what is our the marketing we can say the companies the marketing approach how do we make people understand regarding our products features characteristics and in what way they are better than our other competitors products that means simply we can say in what way we can make ourselves sellable another thing is research and development we know that in this rapidly changing business world what is happening the day by day people are looking for products with new features additional features the new or the higher quality levels latest features etc all these things are developed through research and development cell so from the environment we try to identify opportunities for our organization and from the internal factors we try to focus or try to extract what are our core competencies now when we combine the opportunities that means the environment or the external forces with the core competencies or our we can say what we are best in we can fit and formulate the firm's strategies that means the way the company should move forward here we can take the example of honda where its core competency is the manufacturing of engines now suppose honda is eyeing on indian market honda is a japanese company basically it is eyeing indian market there it looks or finds opportunities in automobile segment in you can say the what utilities or machineries used in farming machines used in shipping that means basically motors so india was lacking on all those things that means high quality motors so looking at the opportunity and its core competency that means the fundamental strength of the organization honda it 
made inroads into various segments of industrial products or automobile sector where motors were the basic part so honda basically it was looking at achieving the goal of becoming one of the best in the motor segment production as well as the marketing part so here it is trying to achieve its objectives or goals through its farm strategies now when we try to develop the strategy we try to look at the industry from three different angles one is is it a single industry so what do you understand by single industry we are producing a single product only a particular product is being manufactured by us now we can take the example when we are talking of single industry a particular uh, company called as you can say suppose sg sunsprills and greenlands the logo is simply you can find on various cricketers bat etc it was set up mainly to produce bats so it became a single industry now what it did it moved into various other cricketing gears like cricket balls the pads helmets gloves t-shirts etc that means in the same area or in the same industry circle we are diversifying first when it was producing a single item we called it a single industry now when related items were produced or items which are used along with the single item like bat the balls pads etc we say related diversification belonging to cricket now suppose sg will move into production of tractors earlier it was producing the cricketing gears now it is moving into tractors yes it is diversifying itself but it is not related to its original production that is cricketing gear so it is on related diversification one best example we can take is suppose mrf mrf all of us know that it is famous for production of tires now if it is producing tires for automobiles mrf it moves into production of suppose tires for airplanes then it is related diversification but if mrs starts to produce cricketing gears like bat etc then it is on related diversification so the strategy should be based on what kind of industry or the diversification the industry is moving into like single related or on related diversification also we look at the structure what happens when we have small organizations with 
limited number of products or a single product we can say we can have the production manager we can have the marketing manager we can have the r and d manager that means according to the various functional areas the organization is divided into units production department the marketing the you can say r and d or you can say also office and administration looking after all the paperwork so here the organization is segmented on the basis of the functional areas each area is headed by its own respective manager what happens in large organization having a wide variety of products there the top management may not be expert in every way of or every segment of production for example let us talk about tata tata is producing automobiles the cars etc tata is producing you can say the big trucks tata is producing you may say iron and steel all these are unrelated and big big units and the whole tata conglomerate or the tata is a big thing so here what happens now the organization divides the whole thing into respective division where each division is responsible for its own product or product line suppose tata automobile segment the cars passenger cars there will be general manager or managing director who will be looking after the passenger car division he will be answerable to the top manager similarly the iron and steel division will be having its own managing director who is responsible to answer the queries of the top management of tata nowadays what is happening there is a need that we should be flexible enough we shall have the characteristic of both functional structure as well as divisional structure that means we may be functionally expert that means suppose i belong to the finance area the finance department i may not restrict myself to a single product line of the organization means suppose i say to the passenger car division what i have to do as a finance manager i have to keep an eye or i can work in various divisions like passenger cars or it may be iron and steel etc so when you combine the characteristic of functional and divisional structure we form a particular structure which is called as matrix so these are the three type of structures we can find now we have to identify a particular person who will be leading a particular department a unit or a part of the unit for which 
he or she will be having the responsibility that we call as the delegation of authority because as the organization grows it becomes very difficult on the part of top management to keep track of all the aspects of the business so in order to decentralize themselves authorities are delegated to managers so while assigning of responsibilities we can assign them according to functional areas just now we had seen functional areas can be production it can be the sales it can be our finance department it can be r and d etc similarly responsibilities can also be assigned according to geographical regions suppose we are working in a vast country like india it may not be a easy task for a manager to look after all the areas in the geographical segment of india so what they do they divide the whole of india into various regions basically we have seen eastern region western region northern region southern region now accordingly managers will be assigned responsibilities according to their place of work that means region so each manager will be looking after their own regions similarly assignment of responsibilities can be done according to the products if a company or an organization has a number of products or product lines various managers can be attached with a particular product according to their expertise that means each product will be having its own manager managers are delegated authority and resources to carry out responsibilities now here what do we see managers are delegated authority what do we mean by that na the manager in that particular segment or unit he will direct he or she will direct the subordinates the way to do the work so that the goals can be achieved for that unit manager will be the authority above the subordinates in that particular department and various resources like finance like your raw materials etc are also provided to managers to achieve their targets what it means the manager as a responsible person or since his responsibility is to achieve the target of the unit or the segment he has to be delegated with authority as well as resources how it helps the managers in an organization the young managers who are working at lower level when they are delegated with authority or they are made responsible for some kind of targets they try to 
hone their skills in decision making keeping in view or in their foresight they will always be looking at how to achieve the target of the organization in a realistic manner this helps them to grow in other words it provides opportunities to gain experience now this responsibilities come with various influential factors now what are the factors that influence whom to report if i am a manager with certain kind of responsibility whom shall i report to my the senior manager just above me in the hierarchy structure or to the top management so that has to be clearly defined whom shall the manager report second thing is the manager who is assigned a responsibility while he is or she is preparing a report what should be the contents of the reports the report content should be in alignation with the responsibilities that is assigned to the managers apart from that another important thing is the frequency of reporting that means what is the time gap between two successive reports is it weekly basis is it monthly basis is it quarterly or is it semi annually etc so that also has to be clearly mentioned now one of the most important aspect of delegation of authority or the elements of delegation we can say it as first is authority second responsibility third is accountability authority yes the manager is authorized or given the power to direct his or her subordinates in the particular area or the unit or the segment the manager is responsible for achieving the targets which are usually in terms of budgetary targets manager may assign the responsibility to the subordinates but if anything goes wrong he cannot or she cannot say that it was not his responsibility it was transferred that cannot be said and for the end results that means what has been achieved in a particular time frame by the manager for that particular unit for which he or she is responsible the manager is accountable he or she will get praises if his achievements are good or may face some kind of action if there are we can say negative results at the end of a particular period now along with responsibility center we come up with responsibility accounting
all the things under responsibility center are reported in terms of accounts it is the widely practiced management accounting and control system first of all what is management accounting we can say that management accounting is that branch of accounting which is the latest one which derives information from both financial accounting that means whose end result are balance sheet profit loss account as well as the cost accounting where the end results may be cost sets or various cost statements and taking this information from both financial and cost accounting management accounting prepares accounting reports which helps the managers to take decisions now this decisions will give some results this result helps us to know whether we are working towards the target or we are falling short of the target and what we can do in order to achieve the targets as we said responsibility accounting prepares statements for all levels of management now let us talk of a lower level of management or lower level of responsibility center the production center now here the production manager since it deals with inputs he or she will be responsible for the cost only that means the cost incurred so there they can find out how much was the cost and they will try to report it to their segment or division manager a divisional manager may be having the accounting reports from the production manager the sales manager the r&d manager etc and they will be consolidating all this to prepare for their particular divisions maybe the balance sheet that means use of resources as well as the profit loss statement that means how much the organization or the division has been able to achieve in a particular time frame this will be reported to the top management the top management it will try to consolidate all the statements that come from various segment managers and they will try to look at what are the achievements of the organization in a given time period whether the organization as a whole is achieving its objectives moving towards its goal or any necessary changes or strategic decisions are needed to be taken this is used as a tool for controlling operations and costs now when we are controlling operations and costs we try to see whether we are matching the budgets or the expectations or we are falling behind it responsibility accounting recognizes various 
responsibility or decision centers that means this accounting system will be based on the various small small units which are headed by managers who are responsible for that particular units may be cost may be revenue may be the profit or may be the investment part so the costs revenues or resources that has been utilized will be traced to the particular segment where it has been used so as we have discussed responsibility centers can be cost center revenue center profit center or investment centers now in cost center as we have already discussed it is basically how much we are spending or how much cost is incurred and it basically focuses on the production department when we talk of revenue we try to look at how much sells how much is the selling price what we can do to increase the sales that means advertisement expenses etc so it leads us to find out how much is the revenue generated or in other words the revenue center if we take revenue as well as cost both the things that means the whole product line segment then that particular division or the product line segment will tell us how much profit has been generated now at the top level all the profits of the divisions will be consolidated and top management will be trying to think the areas in which they can put the capital so that the future generation of profits can be enhanced called as investment centers now while designing responsibility accounting what are the things that we try to consider as we said inputs outputs and resources should be traced to the managers responsible for their decisions any kind of inputs outputs or resources that has been consumed in a particular unit or segment or a particular manager heading a segment should be traced to that particular point suppose electricity consumed by machinery so it has to be traced to the production department and the person responsible is the production manager uh, another example we can take is Uh, the traveling expenses of salesman since it belongs to the revenue center the revenue generation the manager for the revenue center will be responsible for that second is we shall have a measurement of financial effect when we are talking of financial effects we talk of how much cost we have incurred 
how much has been achieved with that much cost is it as per our budget level or is it having a negative impact financial so that has to be measured it provides a meaningful feedback when we measure the financial effects positive effects are good should be praised but negative impacts has to be controlled or if it is not controlled then it may lead to disaster huge losses for the segment communication system should be designed to aid cost and profit goals now our cost and profit goals should be achieved through the communication system that communication system comes through the reporting of the various responsibility centers one of the most important part of designing responsibility accounting is always the manager looks at the budget prepared for their division or the segment now if the budget for a particular period is unrealistic or unachievable then the manager may feel that it is very difficult to achieve the thing and he will be morally down from the very beginning so it is very much needed that the budget has to be made in such a way for the respective particular department or unit or segment or the responsibility center that responsibility responsible manager of that particular area should feel yes yes this was a budget that we had wanted we can do it or give our best shot development of management systems are based on delegation motivation and measurement so you have to delegate authority so when you are delegating authority the managers are responsible as well as accountable secondly they should be motivated enough by looking at the budget which they will be thinking that is this is a budget made for us and measurement when the actual implementation goes on the actual results or the actual accounting figures come forward which has to be compared with the budgets it it will tell us whether we are in the right direction or we are moving away from the achievement of goals now in designing responsibility accounting how the organization structure should be looking like how it should be done responsibility of all revenues and cost should be assigned to individuals some may argue that the cost is incurred by machine like electricity consumed by a machine no machine is not an individual here the manager of the production department is responsible for the electricity consumed by the machine that is there 
under his responsibility or her responsibility so responsibility should be assigned to individual managers the accounting structure should be there in order to measure the performance now the actual performance and the budgeted performance how they will be compared there should be system for that the responsibility should be along with the organization structure and what happens sometimes when we have more than one segment a particular segment may be using the output of another segment of the organization as its own inputs now here a question of the pricing of inputs by the organization comes forward the organization using the outputs of another division may say that it is the division of our parental organization or the conglomerate so why we should pay equivalent to market or a big enough amount we shall pay less for that since it is our sister concern now here the objectives of the division that is producing the outputs to be sent to the other department to be used as inputs may be considered or the manager will consider that i am at the wrong end so there can be some kind of you can say nick and nack between the two managers to avoid this we have to develop a particular transfer pricing system now when we are talking of responsibility centers now we know that yes it is headed by a manager and it forms a hierarchy that means lower level middle level and top level management as we have discussed during this session we can have cost centers revenue centers profit centers as well as investment centers and regarding its characteristics it should be a definite well defined segment of the organization with a manager who is an individual responsible for the activities in that segment and he has the authority to direct his or her subordinates in the division as well as accountable for the results he or she cannot shy away from the negative results now in order to establish responsibility center we have to study various things like organization structure job descriptions of the various workforce layout of the organization production processes etc so each activity has to be defined and we have to develop an organization structure once organization structure is developed responsibility centers will be based on or in alignation with the organization structure like the cost center the revenue center the in profit center and investment center when you are looking at evaluation of centers you can see objectives for cost center it is minimization of cost 
revenue as well as profit always it is maximization but for investment it is how to maximize return on investment that means if i invest certain things today how much shall i be able to generate in the future course out of that investment is it positive or is it negative so while designating units as responsibility centers you should look at directing unit managers attention what are the factors that should be controlled by manager and what is the expertise of the manager whom we are talking of because more experienced and competent manager may handle the responsibility center at its best then we shall be looking at variances as we move on through the responsible centers so this is all we had to discuss in this particular session thank you